Hey everyone, we hope you had a fantastic week. Thanks for joining us online today. I got Chris and Liz and me again here this morning. We also got some special guests with us, John and Verena. Say hey, you guys. Hey, good morning. Hey. Hey guys, also, I wanted to still remind you guys, we are still wanting to make sure we stay connected with you guys. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram Live, we're on YouTube, you can go to our COC app, you can go to our website. There are so many ways you can stay connected with us. So make sure you guys stay connected with us, okay? Also, don't forget that our kids service is right after our 10 a.m. service, so you don't want to miss out. Make sure your kids don't miss out. Also, if you um, on our CLC Spring app, again, if you don't have it, download it. On there, we have a little section for our kids. You can click on it, and we have some activities for them to do during the week, so make sure to check that out. Yes, and if you have a student that's in grades six through 12, we want them to join us every Wednesday night on Instagram at 7.30. So if you're not following our CLC Student Life page, go to Instagram right now and give us a follow. That's every Wednesday night at 7.30. We do worship and a quick devotional. And then on Thursday nights, we have a Zoom meeting with all our students to make sure they're connected during this time. Hey, and guys, so I almost forgot there, but I, I shouldn't forget. Anyway, a while back, Pastor James, some years ago, he talked to us about doing Saturday morning prayer consistently, and we've been doing it ever since, and nothing changed. Please don't grow weary in well-doing. That's in Galatians 9 and 6. Don't grow weary of well-doing. Prayer is still going on every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. Karen and her team are on uh, Facebook Live, and they're doing prayer every morning. So you can send your prayer request in or anything you want to commu communicate to us, whether it's a triumph or whether it's a trial you're going through. We'll be praying with you on that, okay? For sure. Also, if you're watching this morning at 10 a.m., whatever uh, time you're watching, don't forget that if you happen to miss the service, you still have other options to choose from. We air at 10, at 12, and at 6 p.m. So make sure, too, that you are liking and sharing this with a friend or even just sharing it onto your profile. We know that this is a time that we are able to reach so many more people just by the click of a button. So please uh, like and share. Well, as you know, today we have some of our very good friends, John and Verena. Um, during this time of the pandemic, you know, <clears throat> it's easy to focus on the negative, everything that's going around, you know, the job loss, the social distancing, everybody is in their houses, but God is still working and there is so much good that is still happening in this time. And John and Verena shared with me something just so amazing that's happening in their family during this time. And we just thought it'd be great to bring them on and, and talk to them for a few minutes. Yeah, so um, during this time, like, how has the family dynamic in your home changed since this whole pandemic thing has happened with you guys? Um, for us, it's a fast pace and <clears throat> overwhelming environment. And uh, we suddenly have uh, more responsibilities mm -hmm. than we never had before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, adjusting to uh, the new situation, working from home, teaching from home for me, you know, things are a lot different. You know, the work I do it runs a lot slower. There's, of course, more distractions. takes takes a lot longer to get accomplished what we need to. And and I know, you know, that's with you guys. You know, what's going mm -hmm. on with you guys? How are you feeling? How how do you think it's affecting <clears throat> even the kids and the whole dynamic of the family? Um, first, they miss their friends so much. It's hard to do schooling in the house by themselves. So it's, it's a different atmosphere in the house than in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So they, they had a lot of trouble adjustment and um, it really changed them. Trying to explain to them why, of course, we're stuck here in the house so much and everything. And they had just gotten used to, especially our younger son, going out <clears throat> to school, being around other kids. So suddenly being cut off from that has been quite a change for them, one that's been challenging for them to adapt to. Yeah, I bet. I mean, just <clears throat> as an adult, you know, I miss my routine. I miss my schedule. So I'm sure for kids, it's rattling their world and just the change. But um, John, Verena, I know that right before all of this happened, you guys stepped up to the plate as in, in a new role here at church. And you 
you became leaders of our new ministry called Champion Stars. If you're watching and you're not familiar with what Champion Stars is, uh, it's a ministry that we have opened up for our children who have special needs at our church. And it gives us this amazing opportunity to be able to reach them and teach them about Jesus um, in a way that, that works for them. And so John and Verena were so obedient and they said yes to the call and they're now over the ministry and teaching and working with our volunteers to be able to equip them for the classroom. But I know it could be a little discouraging because the very last service we had was the launch of that ministry. And so um, it, it was kind of, we were so excited. We set up the classroom, we had our team, and then it just came to a halt. And so um, talk, I know you have some good news to share with us, even though it was disappointing, you had some, have some good news to share with us. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, first of all, the enemy will do that. That's exactly what he does, is that the very last time, just as we were getting things set up, he's going to do whatever he can to try to stop it right there and make sure that that goodness does not continue on. He's going to try to find a way to make that happen. But, you know, God, we serve a great God, and he's going to give blessings in disguise and find ways to make things happen. And uh, our son, of course, you know, he's, he's special needs and needs uh, to be around other kids and he needs therapy. That is no longer possible with the current situation. It, of course, isn't safe for him to go to his school or go to where he uh, has therapy. So uh, they've been uh, forced to uh, talk with us in a manner very much like this. They Skype with us. They talk to us over the phone. They send us resources. And they've basically been training us and teaching us to give him the therapy he needs so that he can continue learning and making the progress that he has been. And we have both learned so much about how to interact with him, about how to give him the education he needs and everything he needs so that he can continue to grow and develop. It's been very, very enlightening for us. And uh, this is knowledge we cannot wait to share with the Champion Stars ministry. And of course, the most amazing part of it all is that if it had not been for this pandemic bringing these circumstances about, there's no way this would have ever happened, that we could have ever received training like that, or that there would have ever been any need to. We were so excited, even if uh, even all of this crisis is happening, like we learned a lot. We learned um, the attitude of our son and everything like that. Like we, we kind of have really a, a good family time together. And mm -hmm. so we, we learn a lot and we kind of getting better on mm -hmm. it after a few weeks. And even the therapist said that we could probably hire you as our yes. therapist here, you know, and, uh, but before the, uh, uh, even be, be, uh, even after we, uh, say yes to the champion star, we've been praying mm -hmm. since then that God will give us knowledge and wisdom how to lead this team. And so it was hard for us. I, we don't know where to start, but then this opportunity happens. And this is kind of like, wow, this is awesome. Like God really uses this crisis for us to, to continue, continue his ministry. And so for me, for us, it's, it's not really a, uh, it never stopped. He never stopped. The champion star is still working and God never didn't stop working. And so this for us, it's a pause and it's a comma. It's a pause that telling us that I'm still working in a different way. You know, it, it seems like it stopped, but God didn't really stop working. So we're so grateful for that. That's so amazing. I love how God always uses a bad situation for good and i know that when we get back when we get back to church we are going to be able to use everything that you are learning and be able to just empower the teachers and equip them for exactly what they need i mean what what better way you know it, it, straight from the source straight from a therapist themselves to get trained so that way you can train our teachers man god is so amazing and so um guys i just want to commend you and say I am so proud of you guys for being obedient. Uh, you know, you didn't know how you were going to make it, but as, as always, God shows up, he provides, he provides a way and he equips us. Um, the most important thing is our obedience. Amen. And so I'm so, I'm so thankful. I'm so amazed and inspired by, by you guys. And so thank you so much for sharing, um, this morning and man, God is good.
So we hope you guys have a really great week. We're going to keep on going with our pre-service. Pre um, but I hope God blesses you this week. Amen. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you and God bless. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Well, man, that was, that was amazing. I mean, I know that there's so many people going through a rough time, but to be able to see some good come out of it, it it's, it's amazing. It's inspiring. That was, I, I totally agree with you. It was inspiring. It's amazing. And I'm, I'm glad some people getting some good things or learning some good things out of this whole thing that's happening because it seemed like to me, the only thing I'm really learning right now is how to eat. <laughs> I mean, the, the pounds are just coming on, coming on, coming on. <laughs> Hey Chris, oh, I'm with you. Like, my mom, oh. she's got it all. Like, <laughs> tell you, I got Doritos, Cheetos, Fritos, <laughs> all of them. Goldfish. <laughs> I'm soup. coming to your house. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you know, I've been back home since you know college is up, obviously online as well. But um, I'm very grateful that I'm able to come home to a safe environment that I'm in because I know a lot of students aren't able to go home to safe environments or even are able to go home to their families, you know, and be with people to be there to comfort with them, comfort them in this time, you know, so I can only imagine how that feels, but I'm just very grateful to be able to come home to this and, you know, to say, yeah, I, I, you know, I was thinking, uh, and I was having a conversation the other day when we were even talking about, uh, and I guess we were just looking at some of the, you know, some of the things that probably can happen during this time. And we were talking about, kids or anybody that's being abused in their home and we were just saying man we need to lift those people up because they're around that all day now they're forced to be there for a lot of people their safe haven is to go somewhere maybe go to school maybe go to the playground or when they get a chance to get that break from whoever it is that is, is, is abusing them and they don't have that now because they're forced to stay in that situation so my heart goes out and we definitely need to lift those people up in prayer yeah, I agree. I know that <clears throat> we've been focusing on different things, you know, during this, this time that we're at home. Um, you know, we, we've prayed for protection, we prayed for provision, we prayed for healing. Um, but I think that maybe this week, something that we can really focus on in our prayers are the people that are in abusive homes. And even, you know, we joke around about gaining weight and, and having so much food, but there's people right now that are going without food, you know, and that's really heartbreaking. And um, right now, you know, we have all felt the need to love one another more, to be there for, for, for each other during this time. And I think that <clears throat> as Christians, we should really put our love into action. And if we know somebody, you know, that may be struggling, um, maybe have some DoorDash delivered or maybe, have some groceries delivered, you know, um, or even, even, even if you can't do that yourself, a simple text message, a call, a prayer, a word of encouragement um, can really go a long way right now. And so um, let's make that our challenge, you know, let's put that out there. If you feel, if you're listening right now and you feel like an impulse, like, man, I, that's what I want to do. I want to do that. Let us know, let us know in the comment or be thinking right now of like two people that you can reach. Think of two people this week that you can text and say, man, I know we're going through a hard time, but I just want to encourage you. Maybe I even saw somebody else say, reach out to somebody and leave and tell them two things that you love about them. You know, something as simple as that can go such a long way. So um, let's focus on praying for those people that are truly in need this week and also reaching out to those people. So we know that today's service is going to be a big impact. We know that our worship and the word from Pastor James is just going to be powerful and it's going to reach people. So right now, if you would click share, um, and let's, let's pray. Let's pray over our pastor, over our worship leaders, because we're believing for a great service this morning. Amen. So dear God, we just come before you, God. We know that you are still working, that you have not stopped and you are not shaken by this uh, pandemic. And we just pray right now over our worship team over the musicians, over the media team, God, those people that are working so hard, God, to, to make this happen. We pray that your anointing would flow through them, that people's lives would be touched through the worship. We pray for Pastor James, God. We pray that you would continue to speak 
to him and through him, Father, that uh, this would be a time that we would hear the word from you and that our lives would be changed and impacted and that those that are listening, Lord, please prepare their hearts to receive God, that they would hear your word and, and go forth and continue to serve you even during this time, Lord. We pray for everybody who's watching, Lord, that we would have a great week. We pray for provision over their lives, over protection and healing, Lord, and that we would go forth and have an amazing week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Have an amazing week, and we'll see you next week. Bye, you guys. What tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be
we thank you for the promises that you have made to us, Lord God, that our families will be blessed for generations upon generations. We seek your face, Lord God, and we remind you of that promise, Jesus.
Well, greetings in the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us today, and I trust that you have been blessed by our worship team and uh, working so hard to continue to bring us worship every week. And uh, we're just so glad that you're here. To all of our church family, I want you to know Debbie and I love you, still praying for you and with you, and we miss you. And, uh, but I'm thankful we still have an opportunity. We still have a way to connect here online. And uh, if you're joining us today and you have a prayer request, I want you to know that we have a prayer team that is still praying. Uh, they are always on call. We submit uh, your prayer request every week, and you can do that by right there watching online. You can send us a message, uh, whichever platform you're watching, and just let us know. And I promise you, your needs are going to be prayed for. And uh, also, you can go on to our church app or, or our website. Our website is clcspring.org, or you can go on the app, look up Champion Life Center, download the app, and you can actually, there's a connect card where you can share your prayer requests with us. And I want you to know that is important to us. And uh, we know that there's power in prayer, and we've seen miracles after miracles. And so we're just glad that you tuned in today to be with us, and I trust that the Lord is going to continue to do a work today. Um, I do want to take a moment to invite our ushers to come into your home, our digital ushers, and uh, I want to say thank you for your continued support and giving. We could not do what we're doing without you. Uh, first of all, even this is our act of worship. Giving is an act of worship uh, uh, unto God, knowing that He is providing for us even in this situation. And um, so it's a way to worship, but not only that, it fulfills uh, the need of ministry and allowing us to continue to do what we're doing. And honestly, our staff is working harder and more hours now than they have in a long time just to continue to bring the gospel and bring teaching and the good news to you. And uh, so we thank you ahead of time of your giving. Thank you for your continued support. Uh, there's several ways you can give. You can go online to clcspring.org and you can give that way or you can download the app. And there's, uh, you can give through the app. It's probably the most convenient and easy way to do that. Or you can even text to give. Uh, you can text 84321. Let me say that again, 84321. And uh, put in the dollar sign. Put in either offering or tithe and the amount. And it'll set you up if you're not already. But that's an easy way to give. And then if you want to just send us uh, an offering. I know some folks have asked me. They like to just send, uh, send the offering in the mail. Uh, it's P.O. Box 737. It'd be Champion Life Center at P.O. Box, excuse me, 737. Uh, and the zip code is 77383. 77383. Again, we thank you for giving. Thanks for tuning in today. We're going to continue to bring uh, the Word of God to you. And I know God's given me a word for you here today. So let's go to the Word of God. God bless you. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I really believe that you're going to enjoy the word of the Lord that he's put in my heart to share with you. And, you know, there's really nothing really difficult or hard or to understand about what I'm going to say. I just want to simply talk to you about learning to focus on the positive. Focus on the positive. Because honestly, about right now, uh, in the situation that we're in, it's real easy to get negative, man. I mean, you can start looking at all the problems and all the bad and, you know, your kids, you're home with them right now, you're homeschooling them, they may be driving you crazy, your teenagers, you know, maybe your spouse, you're having to get to know them all over again, everybody's at home, or, or maybe even you're going through a difficult time with your job, uh, maybe you've been furloughed, some of you have even lost your job during this season. And so if we're not careful, it's really easy to get negative. And so I just want to talk to you about that today to help uh, encourage you and lift your spirits and get you your mind uh, off of the negativity and focused on the good and focused on positive things in your life. Go to your Bible in uh, Philippians chapter 4. And honestly, we, I've actually read these scriptures even over probably the last few weeks. Uh, but I want to jump to another section in this chapter uh, and just show you some things I believe the Lord's sharing with me. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. It says, be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious 
for any reason at all. In other words, don't be anxious over the what ifs that have, have not happened. Paul says, but in everything by prayer, which we talked about, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And here's the promise. If you'll do that, he says, the peace of God, which surpasses our own human understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Now, that's where we've stopped before, but Paul continues on to the, the scriptures I want to focus on today in verse 8 because he's talking about what are we to focus on. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, in other words, things that are honorable, things that are worthy of respect, whatever things are just, things that are right, things that are confirmed by God's word. He says, whatever things are of good report, admirable things and he says if there's any virtue in other words any excellence in it and if there's anything praiseworthy and here's where I want you to just underline these scriptures or highlight them but he says meditate on these things focus to get your mind in the right place you, you know focus on these things in other words you've got to continually on purpose center your mind on these things and plant them in your heart because here's what I know here here's a principle what we focus on becomes larger in our life I mean if we focus on what's wrong with everything and everybody I'm going to tell you you're going to get to the point where that's all you see you're just seeing all the wrong. I mean, you can focus on uh, what's wrong with your job. You can focus on what's wrong with your marriage or what's wrong with your children or what's wrong with this current situation that's going on. I mean, I've even counseled people that have come to me and said, you know what, Pastor, I made a list of all the things that I'm asking God to change about my spouse. And here's the list. And But what they re didn't realize is that maybe it was their, at their attitude about their spouse that needed to change. And I, I've just suggested to them, look, you're focusing on all the negative things. How about you make a list of all the positive things and all the things that you do love about your spouse? And uh, hey, because maybe it's your attitude about them that needs to change. You know, it could be other people in our lives and, and you know, we need to think about the things that we appreciate them instead of always pointing out things that are wrong with them. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I read a survey this week that said 70% of people hate their job. 70%. That's terrible. I mean, a lot of it's probably because uh, they're focusing on what's wrong. But the truth is, somebody would like to have your job. I mean, think about that. That doesn't mean your job is, is perfect. It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you don't want to get another job, but I do want to point out something important. Listen to me. The way you leave one job, the attitude you leave that job with is going to be the way you enter into the next job. And so, you, you know, sometimes we need to shift our focus and it, at least we need to be thankful that we have a job, even if it's not perfect. You know, I, we can always find something to be thankful for. We can always find something, but our flesh, I'm going to tell you, without God is not naturally grateful. Most of us, I mean, you don't have to try really hard to be negative. I mean, it just comes easy to a lot of us and most of us, but you're going to have to make an effort to be positive. I mean, you're going to have to do it. And I love the fact that, you know what, we can do the right thing on purpose, you have a choice to intentionally do the right thing on purpose. You don't have to wait till you feel like doing it, but you can intentionally do the right thing. You know, I was talking to uh, my son Cameron, who is in the military. He's in the Army, and, you know, uh, right now they've got him quarantined, and he can't move to his next station, and he's really bored, and he's, he's focused on, you know, buying a vehicle. And, uh, and I've been talking to him about it this week, I mean, because that's all he's got his mind on right now. And I said, look, I want to I want to intentionally shift your focus. And I want you to think about this, because you're in a position if you go buy a vehicle because you already have a good vehicle. If you go buy one, now you're going to get payments and you got insurance. And for the next 
five years or so, you're going to be paying on this vehicle, spending all this money that you're hardly going to drive because you're, you don't know where you're going to be at the time, and you're going to be spending all this money. But let me shift your focus. And I, I said, you know, because sometimes we're, we got our head in the wrong thing. I said, what if you took $1,000 a month and you saved it for the next three years, you put it in a money market account or some kind of account that's drawing interest, when you get out in three years, you'll have probably about $40,000. Now, I want you to think about that. Then, I mean, we're only talking three years from now. Then, you've got $40,000. You're going to be able to go buy a home, put some money down on it. The military is going to help you. And then you're going to have money to buy that car you want. And you're still going to have probably $30,000 in the bank. All because you shifted your focus and you can do the right thing on purpose. And just be grateful right now that you have a vehicle. Be grateful that, you know, it's not a terrible vehicle. But the wise thing to do right now is shift your focus. And I guess that's my point is we can intentionally do the right thing on pur purpose. Now, I want you to look at another uh, group of scriptures in John chapter 14. And honestly, I was just reading through these this week, and I didn't think this was going to have anything to do with my message, but actually God gave me something. In John 14, verses 7 through 9, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip speaks up and he says, Well, Lord... Show us the Father. I mean, and it, it's, it'll be sufficient for us. And Jesus said, Philip, man, have you been with me so long that you haven't even known me? Really? You're asking that question? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Now, what's interesting about these scriptures is these disciples, these guys had been with Jesus, all, I mean, about three years and they had been with him nearly every single day, surely you would think that they had gotten to know him. But they, Jesus is saying, you really didn't know me. And you want to know why? Because even in this situation that they were in, they didn't focus on the right things. Jesus is right in front of them. But obviously they weren't focused. I mean, how many distractions... Does the enemy come, and that's what happens, and begins to uh, distract us every day to get our eyes off of what is good, to get our eyes of, off of Jesus. To, I mean, we can be reading our Bibles, we can be doing devotions, but if you're distracted and you've allowed the enemy to come in and just steal that from you, you can still be a negative person and watch, watch me on television or watch me on your iPad or read the Word of God. And so you have to intentionally, is what I'm saying, on purpose, begin to shift your focus so that God can feed your spirit. Be grateful. And so what we focus on becomes larger in our life. So I want you to think about that. Now, in Mark chapter 4, it talks about uh, how the sower sows the seed, which is the word of God. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm sowing the Word of God. The Word of God has the absolute power to change your life, change the, your, your direction, change your whole day, change your uh, whole year. But Mark 4, 19 says that the enemy comes. Let me read it to you. It says, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in. And you know what happens? It says it begins to choke. It begins to choke the word, making it unfruitful. And that's exactly what happens when, when, I mean, how many people have left the church? They've been here, they're sitting here on a Sunday morning. And tomorrow morning they wake up and they're like, church was so good yesterday. And they go to work talking about, oh, it's so great. Well, what did the preacher preach about? Um, I don't know, but it was good. You know, I mean, and you know why? Because they, they actually, let, they weren't really focused on purpose. They weren't intentionally tuning in and paying full attention. And here's what happens. The enemy comes and begins to, to take that word that has been put out there. And before the seed ever gets rooted, he'll take it out of your life. And it really never does anything to change you. And what I'm saying is, is, you know, we have to take an opportunity to take the seed of the word of God and begin to let it focus on it 
and let it begin to get rooted in our life if we really want it to change us. So we got to be careful about the distractions of, that the enemy brings, the negativity that can distract you. I mean, some of you are listening to me right now. Are you really listening to me? I mean, you're being distracted. The kids are running around. But I'm, I, I'm asking you, don't let the enemy, don't let the enemy come in and steal what God wants to do in your life. Now, one of the things that you can do to focus on the positive, and this is going to be on your screen, is Learn how to recognize and celebrate good things instead of grieving over bad things. I'm going to say that again. Learn how to recognize and celebrate good things instead of grieving over all the things that are wrong, all the things that are negative. Because I can pretty much, pretty much guarantee you, you have more right in your life than you do wrong right now. I promise you that. But if you have some pretty big problems that are going on, that may be all that you're seeing. I mean, it's, it's taking your whole focus. And I mean, even, you know, when it comes down to our own faults, we see the negativity, I mean, in our own lives. The devil wants us to always focus on what's wrong with us. Matter of fact, I've never woken up in the morning and had the enemy say, well, before you get up today, I want to remind you of all your great qualities. <laughs> He's not going to do it, man. But God will. If you'll take his word and it's rooted in your heart, he'll remind you. He'll tell you that. So I want to encourage you to think about all the good things that you can and talk about all the good things you can. I mean, think about what you're saying, what you're, what you're thinking about. I mean, because, listen, if the first thing that you do in the morning is turn on the news, it's hardly ever any good news. It's all bad news. Matter of fact, I've heard this about the media. I don't know if it's true. It seems like it. They say if it's good news, it's no news. Because honestly, they're not reporting any good news. I mean, rarely do they report any good news. Um, I mean, I realize there's a lot of bad things going on in the world, but there's also, there, I, I promise you, there's more good going on in the world right now than there is bad. There's, a, there's people are doing things that we're not hearing about that are so great and so awesome. And, and so we have to be careful because if you really, if the enemy will come in and begin to set your mindset change it from a positive mindset and begin to suck the life right out of you if you're not careful and you're going to walk around with your head down defeated and the enemy's going to steal from you and I'm going to tell you if you really want to upset the devil just start being positive you want to upset him I mean look I, I, I learned a long time ago I don't want to be around negative people I mean it just sucks the life right out of me and matter of fact a lot of times uh, negative people like to be negative I mean, they just enjoy it. And if you start talking positive, they don't even know what to say. I mean, eventually they walk off because they don't know what to say. But don't let the enemy or anybody steal what God wants to do for you here this morning. Stay focused on the positive. Can I get an amen? Now, you may say, that all sounds good, Pastor, but man, I'm just a negative person. I can't help it. I mean, there's no point in expecting anything good to happen uh, because when it, when it doesn't happen, then look, I won't be disappointed. And that's a terrible, that's a terrible outlook. And, and I'm going to tell you this, that's a lie. That's a lie from the enemy. God's word says that he came to give you life and life more abundantly, a life full of peace, of joy, and goodness and gladness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that goes opposite of the word. And maybe it's just that your focus is off. You know, you've just gotten off base. You're not recognizing all the good things. And what you're really doing is you're grieving. You're grieving over the bad things. So let me, let me just point this out. What God is doing is always greater than what the enemy's doing. I'm going to say that again. What God is up to and what God is doing, whether we understand it or not, is always greater than what the enemy's doing. And I want you to turn to your Bibles in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16, because this is a real eye-opener for some of us, and I'm going to help you. Talks about walking in the Spirit. Let's read it together. He says, but I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Now, you've got to make it a habit. You've got to, you've got to stay here. There's a reason why he says that. You've got to walk habitually and live in the Holy Spirit, seek Him, and be responsive to His guidance. And then 
you will certainly not carry out the desire of your sinful nature, which, by the way, responds impulsively without, re without regard for God and His precepts. Because that's human nature. I mean, you can go to church, you know, but you can still be walking in your flesh. And really, we can go to church and call ourselves a Christian, but we still are trying, making decisions on our own without listening to the Holy Spirit, without regard with what God's wanting to do in our lives. And that's what he's saying. Well, you say, well, why is that important? Because a lot of times, instead of focusing on walking in the Spirit, we start focusing on what's wrong. We start focusing on our problems. And all day long, our mind is on what's wrong with the world, what's wrong with me, what's wrong with my family, what's wrong with my kids, what's wrong with my job, everything that is negative. But this verse says, if you'll walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the negative in your flesh. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean to walk in the Spirit? It simply means fellowshipping with God. You're going to have to have time. It means being thankful and talking to God about how powerful He is and how He's in control, that He's sovereign, that He knows all things and what I believe that He can do in my life and He can do in my situation. I mean, if I focus on Him instead of everything that's wrong, then I start focusing on being led by the Holy Spirit and then I won't fulfill those negative thoughts and those desires of my flesh. So when I'm walking in the Spirit, I'm seeking God's guidance. Negative thoughts have no place in my mind. And instead, the Holy Spirit is strengthening me and giving me power. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. He gives us power to live. And if I've said it two times already, I'll say it again. What we focus on becomes larger in our lives. So what are you focusing on? Well, Maybe we need to focus on celebrating a little bit. And there's lots of things to help us get our minds off of negativity, but maybe we need to celebrate. I mean, when you read the story in Luke chapter 15 of the prodigal son, I mean, this boy made some really bad mistakes. He goes out, spends everything, I mean, comes home. I mean, he, he had left his father, he had rebelled. But the father, here's what I want you to know, this, the father focused not on all that stuff. He focused on one good thing. He said, my son is home. I'm going to focus on the positive. He didn't start talking about all the, son, well, you're going to have to get your act together. If you're going to come back in this house, you're going to obey all these rules. If you come back in here, you know, you're going to have to prove yourself, you know, before I can trust you again. No, he said, my son is home. Let's, let's celebrate. Let's have a party. Now, another thing that we don't talk a lot about in this story is there was an older brother that had been home, who had stayed home, who had done the right thing. But I'm going to tell you, his, his attitude was terrible. He's like, I ain't going to that party. I'm not, I, no, I'm not, I've, I've stayed here. I mean, I'm, if there should be a celebration for me. And he starts whining and he has this attitude, this negativity. Even after the father begged him to come to the party, he wouldn't come. I mean, isn't that amazing? We can do that even as church people, people that, uh, you know, maybe we know that, oh, yeah, they're, they're doing that and they've done this and that. And then they, oh, they want to show up to church all of a sudden and get their act together. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I know. I know what they've done. I know what they've been doing. I mean, and we start judging them and we, really we should be celebrating the one thing. They've come home. It's a party. That's what Jesus shows us. That's not in my notes, but that's an extra nugget for you this morning. But here's what I've learned from this. And this is good. I mean, God really showed me this week. God's going to have a party whether I want to go or not. You're not going to stop God from celebrating. You can either join him or you can sit out and just be sour in your attitude and be a negative person. But God's going to have a party. And the truth is, I don't think we celebrate enough. We really don't. I mean, and honestly, I'm going to be honest. This can re be really hard for me uh, because I, I, it's not that I don't like to celebrate, but I'm always the responsible person in the room. You know, somebody's got to take the reins and be responsible. And, you know, I mean, like I always see what's next. What do we got to do? I mean, we accomplish one goal. It's on to the next one. And the truth is, I don't stop to celebrate like I should. But thank God I married a beautiful woman who loves to celebrate. I mean, she knows how to take time 
and celebrate life and celebrate the accomplishments and enjoy. Let's just take a day. Let's just take a few hours here. Let's celebrate birthdays. I mean, she absolutely loves to celebrate birthdays. But here's what we do when we get older and we start having birthdays in our 40s and our 50s and our 60s. We're like, you know what? It's not really a big deal. I'm not going to have no party. It's just my birthday. No, we're not going to do anything. We're not doing nothing, babe. We're not doing anything. But I want you to think about this. We go to extreme measures to celebrate our one-year-old's birthday. It may be your child. It may be your grandchild. We are going all out, baby. I mean, we got the cake. We got the balloons. We got everybody invited. We got more people there. Your, your, your one-year-old ain't going to remember who was there, but we don't care. Everybody's there. And listen, what do we do? We take them, we put them in the high chair, and we put this cake in front of them, and we're like, yes, go for it. And they just dig their fingers in it, and they're looking at it, and then they start rubbing it all over their face, and then all in their hair, and then they're just throwing it on the floor. Lord, and we're like oh that's so awesome we don't even care you know you do that we do that but listen if God has kept you alive through your 40s and your 50s and some of you are in your 80s how much more should we celebrate life friend are you hearing what I'm saying but no Here's what we do. We're like, well, uh, we can't have cake because I just can't have, it's got too many calories in it. You know, I got to watch my figure. You know, I'm just watching my figure. Or, you know, I'm not going to throw cake on the floor. That's just ridiculous. And I have to clean it up, Pastor. I'm not going to do that. And that party is just too much trouble. I don't want no party. I'm not doing that. And so we start thinking about what would be and how busy, busy we are. And we don't take time to celebrate anything. Think about it. But here's what my wife decided, and I love it, you know. A long time ago, she's like, you know what? Uh, and I'm getting to this point. I'm getting there. I I'm starting to see it now. She's like, I'm not just going to celebrate my birthday. It's my birthday month, baby. I'm celebrating all month long. And I think that's just a wonderful idea. I mean, what if all of us just took time to celebrate life? Man, I'm alive again. I'm not just celebrating the day. I'm going to celebrate the whole month. It, yes, it's all about me. Y'all celebrate me because I'm alive. And I want to celebrate the goodness of God because I'm alive. It, it would be a good way for all of us to live. I mean, I mean, I'm just excited that I got to live another year. And it's going to take me a whole month to get over it. In the Old Testament, I mean, when you start reading, these people just celebrated all the time. And God actually commanded it. He commanded the Israelites to celebrate these feasts. And I want to run through them uh, as quick as I can because let's just read about them. I think there's something that we can learn from this. I mean, and think about this. They're living under the law, which wasn't any fun at all. And we, now we're living under the new covenant of grace. How much more? I mean, they were commanded to celebrate. How much more should we celebrate the goodness of God? The, so they celebrated these feasts. And the first recorded ever celebration was the Sabbath. The Sabbath. It was a celebration of creation and a rest at the end of the work week. So the first way we can learn to celebrate is celebrate God's creation and the gift of rest. I mean, how many of you take off time to rest and just celebrate and thank God for His creation and that you're alive and you're in the season? And, I, you know, I mean, the simplicity of the things of just walking outside and enjoying what He's created and each other. And He says, then I want you to rest. I mean, I wonder how many people actually take off a day a week. I mean, no, they're like, well, I'm just going to work today. I'm going to work another day and I'm just going to be miserable. I'm going to be miserable. And it's just negative. You know what? I believe if you'll follow God's plan and work, you know, he says, if you'll just take one day, if you, I mean, you'll get more done in the six days that you're working than you would trying to work at the seventh day. And you'll be restored and you're going to feel better. And he gives refreshment during rest and be, being thankful for creation. So I, I, honestly, we can find something uh, to worship and rejoice through rest. And then here's another celebration that they have. It's called the Passover. Matter of fact, they just came to completion with that uh, in the Holy Land. All the Jewish people uh, celebrate the time of Passover, which was remembering that God had delivered them 
out of the hands of Pharaoh. Remember, he sent, God sent the death angel. He said, apply the blood over your doorpost, the 10th plague. And God saved them and delivered them. So Passover was remem it's remembering what God had done. So number two, why don't you just celebrate what God's done for you? How much has God done for you? I mean, what, if you, what would happen if you just took a few days a year to just remember all the great things that God has done in your life. Think about it. Think about what He's delivered you from, what He brought you out of, situations that He turned around when you, you shouldn't even be alive right now, but God delivered you. You shouldn't even be listening to this message right now, but God delivered you. I mean, I think a lot of times we remember what we should forget, and we forget what we should remember. Oh, let me... Let me, let me say it again. I think a lot of times we remember what we should forget and forget what we should remember. We start remembering all the things that are wrong, all the things that were maybe painful in our lives, but we don't remember the th great things that God has done for us. And I'm going to tell you, if you're having a bad day and if you're focusing on all the wrong things, just take an hour. Say, you know, I'm going to stop. I can't, I can't get my mind focused. I'm going to stop and I'm going to start remembering all the good things that God has done. I mean, don't sit around and be miserable. I mean, there's an answer to your misery. God can turn your week around. He can turn your day around if you'll just stop a moment and celebrate what God has done for you. And then, of course, right there immediately following the Passover feast, there's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That be, I mean, it, became immediate, it happened immediately. And sometimes they just had party after party after party. There's no breaks. And then came the Feast of First Fruits. What is that? Well, it was a celebration at the time of the barley harvest to remind the people how God had provided for them. So number three, how can I celebrate? You can celebrate how God has provided for you. Can anybody remember a time when God provided for you? Not just financially. I'm talking about in all capacities. He showed up at the right time. You thought there's no way. There's just no way. I mean, I've been there. Uh, uh, how's this going to work? I mean, I just I can't see it, God. I'm, and, and the thing is, the thing about God, He doesn't always provide ahead of time. He provides on time. Right when you need it, at the right time, because you've got to trust Him right to the point. And we, we didn't know how it was going to happen, yet God provided. And the next time you start thinking negative, start complaining and about what's going on in your life. You know, just start talking about what God has done and how He's provided. I'm going to tell you, you know, boy, I remember a time. I, I, I remember a time, God, when you did this for me. God, I remember when you came through. I remember when you brought provision for us, when I didn't even know how we were going to make it. I'm going to tell you, when you start thinking about all those times, starts praying in the Spirit, I'm going to tell you, God's going to refresh you, give you the positive outlook look and begin to trust him again and say, God, I'm going to keep my mind on you. Start remembering. Start remembering. Then there was the Feast of Trumpets. And this is the last one. This was simply a one day feast. Listen, expressing joy and thanksgiving. So the fourth thing, number four, we need to celebrate with joy and thanksgiving. You know, there are days uh, when I pray, instead of asking God for something, you know, I mean, a lot of times our prayers are, God, I need this. God, please do that. God, you know, I, I need you to do that. But there are days that I simply, I don't ask God for anything. I just start thanking Him. I just start thanking Him and praising Him and start naming all the things that I'm grateful for. Because there's so many blessings. Truly, if you sit down and you start writing your blessings, I'm telling you, your blessings are going to far outweigh your problems because you can always find something. You can always find something to be thankful for. I mean, even this week, spending some time outside just as I was preparing for this message. And I, I, love, I, I love to be out in nature anyway. And uh, this week I was outside and I just started thanking him for the beautiful color of all of nature. I mean, I'm looking around me. Uh, the sky is blue. I mean, the weather was perfect. The birds are chirping and they're all different colors. The grass is green. The trees are turning green. and The flowers are blooming. The, all the different colors of flowers. And I thought to myself, how boring would life be if everything was one color? 
I mean, how boring was TV? I mean, some of you grew up, some of you not even going to remember this time, but I can remember back in the day when all we had was a black and white TV and, you know, go over grandma's house and, you know, we had the rabbit ears and then they put foil on the rabbit ears to get a better picture and it was black and white and it was still fuzzy. You know what I'm saying? But that was the best that we had. And actually, I didn't even grow up with a TV. My family just didn't have a TV in our home. And so actually, when I got to watch TV, it was pretty exciting for me. And uh, every summer, me and my cousin, we would always go stay with my grandma Green. And, you know, don't take this wrong. We loved her and we loved being with her. But honestly, we just wanted to watch TV. I mean, we didn't grow up with a TV. So every time we saw a TV going on, we were like glued to it. Like we we're watching TV. So we'd go stay with my grandma for a week. And we would literally get the program out, uh, the paper programmer of all the, you know, TV shows that were going to come on. And we're, I mean, from six in the morning, we're, we're underlining the shows we're going to watch. And all day long, I mean, we got Speed Racer and we got Casper and we got Tom and Jerry and, you know, Abbott and Costello. And then, you know, the Beverly, uh, Beverly Hillbillies and then Green Acres. And some of you going to remember those shows back in the day. I mean, we just one after the uh, another. I mean. We were glued to that TV. It was so awesome. And it was black and white even. You know, it's like, oh, and then we got color. And we're like, wow. But here's my point. I think a lot of you have a lot more color in your life than what you're seeing. Don't let the enemy come in and begin to steal the celebration in your life. The positive things. I mean, these people in the Old Testament, they would have never considered not keeping these feasts because they were commanded to do it. And you know what? I believe that God is telling us today, start celebrating. Start focusing. Start thinking about what you have instead of what you don't have. Start looking at the good things in life. Remember the good things that God has done for you. Remember how he's provided for you. Focus on all the positive things and be thankful and celebrate. And that's what God's word is to said to us, say to us today because Paul comes along and he says finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just things that are pure things that are lovely things that are of good report if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy are you ready focus meditate on these things Amen. I want to pray with you this morning. Father, thank you for your word. I know this is a time where the enemy would come and try to steal our joy, give, get us to be negative and get down and out. But Lord, you've given us your word and you've come to lift our spirits today to say, you know what? Focus on the good. Focus on the positive things. Focus all the, on all the things that are right and not what's wrong. And Lord, I know that you can just take our minds and we can intentionally do the right thing today. You know what? I don't care if my, my spouse looks at me this morning and says something negative. I'm just going to respond with something positive. You know, I'm just going to tell her she's beautiful. I'm just going to tell him he's handsome, you know. I mean, Lord, thank you for the power to intentionally have the choice to choose life. And I pray for everybody right now. We're in our homes. We're still quarantined. We're going through a difficult time. But you know what? There's a lot of things to be grateful for and to celebrate. And so we're just going to have a party today, God. We're going to focus on you. We're going to focus on what's right and what's good and the blessings that you've given us. I thank you, Father, for your encouragement today. Touch every person in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, if you're here today and you're watching and you don't know Jesus Christ, you're like, man, you Christians are just a bunch of happy people. It seems like, yeah, y'all just faking it. No, when you really have a relationship with God, He changes our outlook. There really is a life change. There's a, there's a looking forward to We have a hope beyond hope. And even in bad situations, God gives us peace. And if you're here today, you're watching, and you want to know Jesus, it's really simple. He said, you know what? You just got to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died on a cross for you. And he said, you shall be saved. That he's taken every sin away. He already went to a cross and died for you. And if you're ready to, you know what? Maybe you're running from God. Maybe you've been a part of a church. Maybe you've given your heart to God in the past and you're running, but I, I need to make a new commitment. And if you're watching, I want to pray with you to, real quickly. 
If you're ready to do that, why don't you just bow your head with me right where you are and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the good news that you went to a cross to take my place. You died for my sins. I believe in you, and I, I, I want to face you today. I want to give my life to you. I want to start fresh. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior, Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer today, we congratulate you. We celebrate with you. Come on, some of the, you watching online, give us, some, give us some hands up in the air. Give us some hand claps online. Let's celebrate with them. But not only that, I want you to go online, even wherever you're watching, just let us know. I, I made a decision today to follow Christ. Maybe you need prayer. Go on, just let us know. You can even, if you want to keep it private, you can go to our app at Champion Life Center. You can follow us. Uh, on, on the app and there's a place, there's a connect card where you can let us know that you gave your life to Christ today. Maybe you even need prayer, go on that app. You can leave a prayer request. We want to pray with you. Amen. So, thank you for tuning in. Remember, let's focus on the positive. Let's just lift our spirits right now. Amen. Give somebody a high five in your house. Give them an elbow. Give them a hug. And you can do that. You're already living with them. So just to celebrate. Let's focus on the positive this week and just believe that God's going to use us. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be back here next Sunday to bring you another word of God. And uh, just know that Debbie and I are praying for you. We'll see you next time. Thank you again for joining us online today. We hope you enjoyed today's message. Make sure to stay connected with us, turn on your notifications, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website. We'll see you next week.